kind of certification. And if I remember correctly, too, you received some pushback from some of the largest nations in the EU. How do you feel about this proposal today? Uh, that is correct, uh, Julia. I was the first to raise the issue of a digital green certificate uh, back uh, uh, in the middle of January when it was absolutely clear to me that uh, at some point, uh, you know, come uh, spring or summer, uh, Europeans will feel the real need to travel and we need to make it as easy for them to travel as possible. Uh, at the time there was some pushback indeed, but I'm very happy that today the Commission officially adopted this idea and has put forward its proposal for a digital green certificate, which will significantly facilitate travel, something which of course is very important for a country such as Greece, which is very dependent uh, on, uh, on tourism. What the digital green certificate is, is very simple. It's a simple digital proof either that you have been vaccinated or that you have a negative test result or that you have recovered from COVID. Uh, with such a certificate you will be allowed to enter uh, a country such as Greece without any quarantines and without any additional testing at the border. So as more people get vaccinated uh, I expect um, uh, this digital green uh, passport to become standard in travel uh, and I do expect that it will allow us to safely open for uh, the summer holidays. We intend to start our summer season officially uh, around May 15th. Uh, and uh, as we expect uh, many more people within the EU to get vaccinated within the second quarter, uh, I also expect uh, travel during the summer to pick up significantly. So yes, I'm very satisfied personally uh, that this proposal has been adopted by the Commission and has, and has been in principle accepted by all the large uh, EU member states. How significantly a pickup are you expecting and how will this facilitate? Because I know you've already had to take steps on your own. You've signed an agreement with Israel already, one of the leaders of pushing out vaccines. You're also working on agreements, I believe, with the UK and with Serbia, who are also pushing ahead with vaccines. These are fantastic steps. But should you really be having to do this alone, Prime Minister? Well, look, most of our tourism comes uh, within the EU, so it is very, very important to ensure that for travellers within the uh, EU that they will uh, be able to travel uh, as easily uh, as possible and without any additional uh, restrictions. Now, when it comes to uh, travel from outside the uh, EU, uh, of course, we're open to put in place a very, very similar arrangement. We are indeed, as you pointed out, starting with Israel, because Israel has vaccinated more than 50% of its population, and Greece is a very popular um, destination for Israeli tourists. So we essentially intend to replicate this arrangement uh, with other countries that are not uh, members of the EU. And I expect this, Julia, to be the standard um, sort of um, uh, uh, tool that we will use in order to facilitate uh, travel. Uh, as you pointed out, um, we are very dependent on tourism. We did manage last year to open up safely. We received a fraction of the tourists that we would normally receive. And we do uh, expect a much better tourism season um, uh, this year. Uh, apart from the digital green certificate, we will do everything within our power to make sure that visitors come to Greece uh, in the most uh, uh, safe um, way. So we have in place all the necessary protocols to ensure that they will get the full uh, Greek uh, experience without uh, any, any real compromises, but with always putting their safety as our absolute priority. If we did it last year, we will certainly do it much better this year now that we have all the these additional tools at our disposal. And I know your own uh, vaccination certification procedure as well is all digitized as well because I've, I've seen evidence of it. Can you address one of the criticisms and the concerns I think for your own people which is that as a result of the tourism that you saw last year you saw a second wave of infections and something that you'd managed to handle before that incredibly well. What's the risk that you see a further surge in, in COVID cases even with the precautions that you're putting in place? Look, uh, all European countries have seen a second, a third. Some European countries are already in their fourth uh, uh, wave. We are seeing uh, a surge uh, uh, right now uh, as we speak, which is uh, uh, the equivalent of the third wave that many European countries um, uh, saw a couple of months ago. But, uh, Julia, as more people get vaccinated, uh, I expect that we will be able to cope uh, with COVID much more effectively. Uh, we uh, are proceeding, uh, I would almost say, ahead of schedule. We're one of the best uh, countries within the 
EU when it comes to our vaccination uh, pace. And we know that uh, once we reach the milestone, which we expect to reach by the end of May, April, which is that we will have vaccinated everyone above uh, 60 with at least one shot and also everyone with serious underlying conditions. Uh, once we reach that point, we take a lot of pressure um, uh, from our hospitals. So that is the point when we can uh, anticipate uh, a return to normal activities. It's essentially what is happening in Israel uh, today. COVID is still present. People still um, uh, um, do get sick, but uh, their healthcare system is able to cope with it without any significant significant difficulties. So this is uh, where I think we will be uh, in a couple of months. Uh, and this is, I think, how we will be able to deal with COVID um, uh, um, uh, at least for, uh, for the next six to 12 months. They also managed to ensure supplies, which is something that the EU's clearly struggled with. Um, even as you're ready and set up when those supplies come in, you've been using Pfizer, I believe, and AstraZeneca's vaccine. And in light of some of the recent concerns, I saw that Greece didn't suspend the use of AstraZeneca amid sort of confusing responses, I think, from various different nations, including the regulators in Europe. What's your view on well, the handling well, of this? Uh, well, uh, first of all, let me let me point out that, of course, uh, Europe is probably a couple of months behind uh, uh, the mm. U.S. and the U.K. in terms of its vaccination uh, pace. Uh, uh, there were clear benefits in terms of purchasing vaccines at the European level, especially for medium-sized countries such as Greece. But, of course, there were also delays that were, I think, openly acknowledged uh, by the Commission. Uh, allow me to point out that at the level of the regulator, the European regulator, there is no confusion whatsoever. The EMA has been very, very clear uh, in telling us that the benefits uh, of the AstraZeneca vaccine clearly outweigh the potential costs. And that is why Greece was one of the few countries that went, went against the trend. And we are currently continuing uh, with our AstraZeneca vaccination um, program. Uh, and uh, we uh, expect uh, you know, a decision by the EMA to be taken uh, tomorrow. If the EMA tells us that we need to suspend the program, of course, we will suspend spend it immediately. But frankly, uh, Julia, I don't understand to the extent that all European countries have uh, trusted the EMA so far with authorizing the AstraZeneca vaccine. I don't understand why decisions have to be taken at the level of individual member states. Of course, every country is responsible um, um, for dealing with this issue uh, in the way it sees uh, most, uh, uh, most suitable. Uh, but we uh, have aligned ourselves fully with uh, EMA recommendations. And until further notice we will continue with our AstraZeneca vaccination program. Forgive me, and that was where I was um, meaning to talk about the confusion between the response from the EU states, the various responses from the EU states, and obviously differing in that regard. Um, Prime Minister, I want to talk to you about Greece because uh, what I hear from, from friends, and I've spent um, many uh, periods of time in, in Greece myself, is that you know people are tired of, of lockdown, they're tired of of handling this virus and they look at the ICU capacity, the intensive care, and they're wondering whether the strategy that you have right now is correct. Can you just respond to the strategy that you have right now to contain the virus and, and the concern perhaps that going forward, the economy is gonna be a challenge once again, given the struggles that, that Greece has faced in the past? Look, Julia, we need to be honest, everyone is tired uh, in terms of dealing with COVID. And what you uh, see as COVID fatigue uh, across Europe has very, has, you know, uh, common characteristics. Uh, we have essentially uh, restricted economic activity for the past four to five uh, weeks because we anticipated, uh, you know, a third wave, which is currently um, uh, happening in Greece. Uh, had we not taken these measures, things would have been significantly worse. Uh, of course, our hospital system is under stress, but we're still able um, uh, to deal with the problem. Uh, and I'm absolutely certain that had we not taken the steps that we did uh, take um, um, a month ago, uh, we would have faced uh, a much more severe severe crisis now. Uh, and I do expect uh, this wave to plateau within the next week uh, or 10 days uh, and, and then start coming down. You know, there's always a similar uh, pattern. At the same time, uh, we need to be smart in terms of letting people um, uh, become active again without compromising our main strategy in terms of containing um, uh, the virus. So that's exactly the balance that we need to strike. How do we let uh, people some degrees of freedom without um, compromising our overall strategy? This is exactly what we're looking at and we uh, expect to make announcements uh, within the next um, you know, 48 hours. You know, at the same time, what I do need to point out is that we have significantly strengthened our 
a national health care system. We've more than doubled our ICU beds uh, uh, over the past um, uh, year, which uh, was a significant achievement uh, for Greece. And if you look at the overall statistics, the way we've dealt with the pandemic since the very beginning, Greece still ranks as one of the best European countries uh, in terms of deaths per million, which unfortunately is the most gruesome, but the most indicative statistic in terms of how well um, a, a country has dealt uh, with the pandemic. So we will deal with this uh, uh, third wave. I have no doubt about that. And as vaccinations um, uh, will, uh, will increase, we will be able to start um, resuming normal economic activity and we will be open um, uh, for the summer uh, for people to come to Greece safely uh, and enjoy uh, the unique uh, Greek summer uh, in Greece as they, as they have done or as they expect to be, uh, to be doing, especially in these times where people will feel the real need to travel. Um, and we want to make sure that uh, if they choose to travel, they come to Greece and Greece is our number one destination. Oh, my goodness. Don't you worry about that. I was Googling this morning while I was preparing for the interview and just a dreaming, quite frankly. Um, very quickly, you are finding the balance, I think, in one specific place, which is the financial markets. I read this morning that you're set to launch a 30 year bond issue where you know, given past history. This would be the first time, I believe, since 2008. That is a marker. <laughs> of regaining financial market confidence. And I have about a minute left to talk to you, Prime Minister, but I did want to mention this. Your comments on that. This is vitally important for the country too. Yeah, well, uh, well, well thank you, Julia. Had we, had we spoken uh, you know, a couple of years ago, it would have been mm. inconceivable for Greece to uh, actually launch a 30-year bond. But we did it this year. Uh, it was more than 10 times oversubscribed. Uh, I think we'll be raising around 2.5 billion uh, euros with what we consider to be an attractive interest rate for a 30-year bond. And I think it is uh, a proof that Greece, Greece, is, uh, Greece is back in the sense that uh, we've left the financial crisis behind us for good. The future of the country is extremely promising. I expect rapid growth once the pandemic is over. A lot of investors are looking at Greece as an interesting, very interesting and very appealing investment opportunity. And I think this 30-year bond is just one uh, uh, additional step uh, we take uh, in the direction of leaving you know, uh, our legacy and our past of the past decade uh, behind us once and for good. And fingers crossed for a strong and safe summer season too. Uh, Kyriakos Mitsotakis, the Prime Minister of Greece. So thank you for joining us on the show today. All right, coming up after the break, renewal of the world is coming. So says the CEO of Expedia, who's predicting a roaring post-pandemic travel boom. And he's next. At first, I was 